Good evening, dear ladies. Good evening, dear Rabbanim. <laughs> give us the schut to greet Mashiach Tzitkanu b'mara b'yameinu, amen. Shagem v'asar Eliyahu, navi Eliyahu, tishbi Eliyahu gladi, b'mara v'anu Mashiach Davidi l'anu v'zachur l'atov. Dear ladies, I'm reminding you that we are continuing the second lesson about Yehud, the Jewish laws of uh, Shomer Negia. Everybody knows what Shomer Negia is? Being secluded men and women, that they don't touch each other, they don't hug and give kisses on weddings and everything. You can hug and kiss your husband, but not when you have your period and counting the seven days. Your children, that's okay but not other relatives. You can hug and kiss your mother, you can hug and kiss your aunt, women to women, but not your uncle and other relatives. In general, we're going to speak. We had a whole lesson that spoke about Yehud. I would like to give a few things before we continue with it. First of all, this Parashat HaShavua, this week is Parashat Kitavo. And Parashat Kitavo has 98 curses for the for the children of Israel, Lo'alenu, that if they won't listen to Hashem, there's 98 curses over there. We, Hashem gave me the schut to give lessons that, regarding this, so you should go to rabbanitirs.com or toranytime.com, Bezrat Hashem, and you'll find lessons Besiat HaDishma'ah. But I would like to tell you, why do we read, why do the sages put the Parashat Kitavo before Rosh Hashanah? In order that in Chas Shalom, the children of Israel didn't listen to Hashem, that by reading this parasha, it's like we, Lo'alenu, had all of these curses, and by reading it, just by reading it, and by this, we are patur, yotsev, with all of this klalot. So it's written, the Chazal said, that the year with its curses will pass away, and the new year with a lot of blessings upon us, and Klal Israel will come, Bezrat Hashem. That this year is the last year, Bezrat Hashem, of suffering. This year is the last year that there are children of Israel that do not know Hashem. This year, the coming year will be the year that everybody knows Hashem. The children of Israel and oh, the whole world, Bezrat Hashem. That this year... That, that some people don't have zivugim, don't, didn't get married. Next year, the whole year is the year of marriage. Amen. This year, if the people that do not have children, next year, all of the children of Israel will have children, Amen. Bezrat Hashem. Amen. This year, if somebody is in prison, if it's with the evil inclination, or it's prison to, literally, so this next year, everybody is free from the evil inclination. And we, and we all satisfied with what Hashem gave us. And we are happy because we know Hashem. Not only in our mouths, but our hearts know, know Hashem. I, I was asked the question over here, what happens when we daven to Hashem? So when we daven to Hashem, we need to daven and be happy all the time. So it's a big mitzvah to be happy. But what happens when we feel sad and we want to cry? <laughs> so it's written in, in Tehillim, Perek chapter, uh, Pei Tet, 89. It's written over there, Beshimcha Yagilun Kol Hayom. So Beshimcha, in your name, Yagilun Kol Hayom. It means that in your name we should be happy the whole day. But the initials is Pchia. The initials together, the Bet, the Yud, the Chaf, and the He, is Bechi, is crying. So Rabbi Nachman Breslov says about it, that even if we feel sorry and we feel sad, you can cry. So cry. But tell, tell, tell to Hashem, Hashem, even when we cry, we want to be happy with, with, with all of the suffering that you gave us. Even when we cry. And in order to wipe sins, when we cry, truly cry to Hashem, you take your tears and you wipe your forehead with your tears. Why? Because all of the sins of a person is written on his forehead. Oh. That's, yes. That's why when the angel of destruction comes, Hashem told the children of Israel in Egypt to go into the house and not to go out. 
and to put the blood as a sign and not to go out. Why? Because the, the angel of destruction does not refer and does not distinguish between a tzaddik and not a tzaddik. Even a tzaddik, even a righteous person has a sin. And the sin is on his forehead. So when you cry, even if you have sorry, sorrow for your own uh, uh, misery and your own um, sufferings, wipe your forehead and say to Hashem, may these tears bring Mashiach Tzitkenu B'Mirabi Amen Amen. That these tears will be the tears of the Shekhinah. That these tears and this suffering that we are going through will take part of the suffering of the Shekhinah. Take part of the suffering of Mashiach. And by these tears, Bezat Hashem, Yibane Beit HaMikdash B'Mirah B'Yameinu, that the temple will be built now, Bezat Hashem, in our days, Bezat Hashem. So use this in order to ask B'Siyat HaDishma for Klal Israel, not only for yourselves. Now, another thing, dear ladies, Bezat Hashem, on the t next week, Tuesday night, is already the 25th of the month of Elul. The 25th of the month of Elul, Hashem started to create the world. And, the f and on the first day of Tishrei, He created Adam Vechava, the first human being. So on the 25th of the month of Tishrei, we go to a, the Mikveh, but we do more than that. I'm reading you from Tfilah Le Moshe. It's next Tuesday. Hello. Yes. Oh, I said that. Sorry, I said Tishrei. It's the 25th of um, Elul, the month of Elul. Now, the month of Slichot. Derech Agav, Motzei Shabbat, Bezrat Hashem. Motzei Shabbat, this Motzei Shabbat, Bezrat Hashem, the Ashkenazi start also to say Slichot. They join the Sephardic with Slichot, Bezrat Hashem. This Motzei Shabbat. We're going to Tfilah Lemoshe Shal Rabbi Mordechai Shara B'Zchutot Hagen Alenu. And I'm going to read to you. He says, and he quotes also the Ben Ishchai, Zchutot Hagen Alenu. And it says like this. Tikun velimud miyuchad l'shmira v'atzlacha belel chafei be'elul v'yom chafei be'elul v'yimei b'riyat ha'olam. It's a special fixing for the day of creation and all the days of creation until creating the first human being. So it says, Katav Rabbeinu Yosef Chaim, Besefer Lashon Chachamim, that the Ben Ishchai wrote, Rabbeinu Yosef Chaim, Zchutot Hagen Alenu, wrote in the book of Lashon Chachamim, on the day of the 25th of Elul, Biyom Chafei Be'elul, Tizaher Bo Lekotsho Be'oter, be very careful to sanctify this day. Besamuch Leben Ashmashot Shalel Chafei, and close to uh, tonight, Ben Ashmashot, when the night goes down, ma? sunset. Sunset, to the, the sunset. He says, Taset vila achat lavir. We do seven, we emerge ourselves in the mikveh seven times. The first immersion is to take off the ruach ra, bad spirit from ourselves. The second immersion, we. we eh? Immersion. Immersion. The second one, Bruch Abba, is to take anger off ourselves. We say that, Hashem, please take any bad spirit from us. The second one, please take when we are in the water, please take all of the anger that is around us and in us. And five more tvilot, five more immersions. Lekabel ha'arat chamisha or dechesed. To accept upon ourselves, you understand what I'm saying, when you dip your body in the water. So, to, sorry? Deeping. Yes. So, t five more to accept, dear ladies, to accept, here, come please. Okay. To accept five lights of chesed that were created from the beginning. So, you ask from Hashem, please bring Mashiach. This year, that's the end, please that Mashiach will come, that all of the children of Israel do tshuva and all the nations will do tshuva, that we all repent in front of Hashem, we will all know who is Hashem, that Hashem is the creator, and we are only here for visitors, that this world does not have any existence or reality without the true world. This world comes only to prepare us to the, for the true, the other side. This world is only a preparation. This world is only a corridor to the living room. So if there's no living room, there's no corridor. This is only a corridor to the living room. So there's no existence to this world without the true world, the next world. 
So this is what we need to remind ourselves. So we ask from Hashem, please, see that Mashiach will be here. See that we'll have the schut, us and Klal Yisroel, to greet Mashiach. That we'll have the schut to go to Eretz Yisroel. You need to have a schut to do Aliyah Eretz Yisrael. Only to go to the land of Israel, it's called Aliyah, to go up to the land of Israel. But when you go out of the land of Israel, it's called Yerida. To go down, out of the land of Israel, it's called, called to go down. To go to the land of Israel is called to go up. Because the land of Israel is holy. And why is the land of Israel holy? So Hashem says, we're going back to Yehud. I'm connecting this with Yehud. Hashem says, I took the nations out of the land of Israel. I want you, the children of Israel, in Parashat Acharei Mot and Kedoshim, do not learn from the ways of the Egyptians and the ways of the, of the people that lived in Canaan, in the land of Israel, because they... They had intimate relationships that were forbidden and Hashem does not allow it on the land of Israel and anywhere. Like we have, we are forbidden to have intimate relationships that are forbidden and we have for, for, are forbidden to be secluded men and women alone except for father and mother and, and father and child or mother and child or, or husband and wife. But we are not allowed to be together in the same room alone. The Goim have also these prohibitions. <coughs> the, it's part of the seven mitzvot of Noach. It's part of the seven commandments of Noach. They also have it. We learned it over here. So this is one of the mitzvot too. In Parashat Kitavo, there's 98 curses that refer to the ruining of the second temple. And the second temple was ruined because of false hatred. A, a, a hatred that didn't have any reason, to, because the truth is we don't have any reason to hate each other. When Hashem says, Lo tikom ve lo titor, ve'aftalcha kamocha ni Hashem, in Parashat Kedoshim, He says, Hashem, you should not revenge, and you should not have any grudge against anybody. You should love your fellow Jew like you love yourself. Ani Hashem, learn from me, Hashem. It means, he refers to not to people that are good to us, because this is obvious that we love them. He says, to, to people that are not good to us. Yes, exactly. That's what Hashem says. You wouldn't revenge and have grunge against them, even if they wronged you. Because remember that they're only the stick. I am Hashem that caused them to do this. Why would they be punished? Because they, they had freedom of choice. They decided that Hashem has a lot of shluchim, a lot of messengers, but they took upon themselves to be a messenger for a, not a good thing. So that's why they will be punished for this, because they still had a freedom of choice to choose either to do it or not to do it, and to find the merit of the person that they went and they wronged him. So it's in our, it, it, literally, it's, it's in our hands with the help of Hashem. Because you ask from Hashem, all, all questions are at the end of the lesson. Write it down, please. So please, we ask from Hashem for help. I ask it 24 hours a day, seven days a week. When I feel that I start getting angry or something I dislike, even over my children or something, I say, Hashem, please help me. Please help me. I put Daka. I take a cup and say Shakol to remember that everything is in the word of Hashem. I need to remind myself that Yetzirah, of course, I need to remind the Yetzirah. You know, every Motzei Shabbat, in order that I won't get angry during the week and the Satish I will be calm, doesn't matter what happens, Bezrat Hashem, I read loudly Igeret Ramban. The Igeret, the, the uh, letter of the Ramban, Rabbi Shimon ben Nachman, Shotot Hagen Alenu. And I ask, and I ask, I, when I finish reading it, I say, Shamat Iris, did you hear that Iris? I ask myself, I, I, loudly. <laughs> I ask myself, Shamat Iris? So all of my organs will listen to it. Because when you get angry, oh, the whole body gets angry. It's not part of your body getting angry. All of your is getting angry. <laughs> so I remind myself, every Motzei Shabbat, I read it after reading all, after reading all of this, all the blessings, then I remind myself, and I ask myself if I heard it, to be sure that I heard it, <laughs> that the Yetzirah also heard it, that the evil inclination also heard it. So 
seven immersions in the mikveh. And what I wanted to tell you over here, that Parashat Kitavo, the 98 curses, refer to the second temple because of false hatred. But false hatred is parallel to three averot, to three sins. That it's written, Yehareg ve'bal yavor. These are mitzvot, these are commandments that you are not allowed to go over them and you, it's better that you will die and not do them, these sins. One is worshipping other gods. The second one is having intimate relationships that are forbidden, zarayot. This is a, a, a prohibition against being secluded men and women. It starts from this. And the third one, dear ladies, is shfichudamim, is murder, is killing. These are three averot. All of these are parallel to false hatred and parallel to slandering because false hatred starts from slandering. And you know, there's no good bodies as people who listen to Lashonara, who listen to uh, slandering. Why? Because when you hear slandering, it's like there's a Kesher Shtika. Ech mo'am Kesher Shtika? Silence. Like a... a, 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 a no code, like a chain, a chain of silence. A person has already an idea about you. He doesn't know if it's true or not, but it doesn't matter. He already accepted it as it's true. And when he comes to you, he already has it in his video, in his mind, everything. And he, and then Besiata Dishmaya, it causes damage in Parnassa, in income in marriages, to get married, it causes problems, in a lot of things, as in, in social, when we are socializing with other people, it causes problems in schools, because I don't know what happens, but usually what happens is that uh, the schools, they call, uh, the schools, let's say if a, a child was sent out of a yeshiva, and they said that they are not accepting the child, and they, he goes to another yeshiva, they call the first yeshiva, and then the slandering starts. Mm -hmm. And then there's a connection of, uh, of silence. Nobody tells you exactly what they said, but everybody knows about you. Nobody asks if it was true or not true, that you can defend yourself at least. You can explain, maybe there's explanation behind, maybe it's not true. Maybe they disliked you. Because today is, there's a lot of reasons to lo'alenu, nonsense reasons. It can be the color, it can be if you're Sephardic or Ashkenazi, it can be if you're Hasid Chabad or Satmer or Gur or Vizhnitz, it can be if you're Chovesh Kippah Sruga or Kippah Shechora, if you are Shomer Masoret or you, are, you, don't have, you don't keep the commandments, you're not um, as absorbent. So Baruch Hashem, we found a lot of things, Baruch Hashem, to the Yetzirah, the even inclination found a lot of things to make us emotionally separated. That's the goal of the Yetzirah, dear ladies, to make us separated. Because he knows that if we will be united, even though not all of us are observant, not all of us are mekami mitzvot, and if we are united without any difference, color, the, the level of kiyu mitzvot, the level of observance, nothing, without any difference, faradim, shkenazim, everything, Yemenite, if we don't have, we are united, immediately Mashiach is here, and we won't go through all of the sufferings that are supposed to be. But what happens is we don't listen here. We are now sitting in a shiur. We need to practice it. We're sitting in a shiur. And I'm looking all around all the children of Israel. Aren't we afraid? Don't we see what's going on in the world? Don't we see that we are the first Seir Lazazel? The first one that they're going to knock on the door. Don't you see the whole world is knocking on our door? The, we don't understand that it's because of false hatred? We don't understand it yet? When, when will we understand this? When it's too late? And then we cannot do anything anymore. And when we are law alenu punished, which means that when we bring the sufferings upon ourselves, it's not from Hashem, it's the sufferings that we bring upon ourselves because of all the destructive angels that we created. Then what will we say? It will be too late. We can still stop it before it's, everything is out of control. But Hashem gives us and explains again and knocks on our door again and saves us and again knocks on our door. He says, please love each other. Please, that's what I want from you. It doesn't matter. 
because everybody eventually will do tshuva. And it doesn't matter the level of how religious you are. You are all the children of Israel. For the goyim that look up upon you, you're all the same. We are all the same. For them, we are Jewish. Second World War, they looked four generations backward. Even the one that got married to goyim, to non-Jewish people, they took them out. Because they looked four, four generations backward. Doesn't it tell us something? Doesn't it tell us that it's nonsense? When will we recognize this and just take responsibility upon ourselves and start practicing? It starts with one person, like Avraham Avinu. It starts one person in a house that starts practicing um, unconditional love for the children of Israel. Then Bezvat Hashem, look what's happening around us. Look how many people are getting divorced. Ma'olechpo, where's the love that's supposed to be? Where's the consideration for the children that we gave birth to, that Hashem gave us? We need to pay attention to open our eyes and our ears and start thinking, we are here temporarily. It's ridiculous. It's even not logical. It's not that we have forever. Nobody knows when he goes out of this world. Nobody knows. So we need to open our eyes and to ask from Hashem for help that Besiat HaDishmai will find the merit of all Jewish people. First it starts at home of our children, our husbands, our siblings. That's how the circle starts in your own corner around you. Then it goes out. Once you practice this, your children see it. They also study from you. They're like a sponge. So we are all of what we studied last lesson, and we're going to study this lesson is about the sins of Yehareg ve Baliavor. You should die and not go over this. But we, some of us don't even know it, and know, don't know how severe it is. So to be secluded, men and women together, when they are not allowed to be. So, but let's finish first of all the 25th of the month of Elul. And it says over here, by Rabbi Mordechai Shara Bishrutot Aganelenu, he says, Ki Hafei Belul, the 25th of the month of Elul, Huaya Yom Rishon de Sheshet Emei Bereshit Shenivra Bohora Chesed. It was the first day of creation that the light of mercy was created, a big light. Vetizer Kolota Laila Ve Yom Mikas. So Tuesday night and Wednesday, you are not allowed to be angry. So remember this, write it, write a big note, put it on the refrigerator that you remember not to be angry. And don't be engaged in, in nonsense. Next one, next Tuesday night and Wednesday. Tuesday night and Wednesday is the 25th of uh, the month of Elul. Do not fast on that day. Ela tochal balala, you should eat at night, Bezrat Hashem. Uvayom lechem uvasar, you should eat bread and meat. Vetevarech birkat amazon bekavana, you should say birkat amazon with kavana. It's like saying Shmona Esre. When you say birkat amazon with kavana, it's like you're standing and saying Shmona Esre. That's how it's important. Like the, the, the prayer that you stand. Vetochal ba minem etika, and have sweet things. Because it's just before Rosh Hashanah, v'tarbeb tzedaka and and give a lot of tzedaka, v'tadli katav ishtecha v'oto alayla chamesh nerot and at that night, Tuesday night, next Tuesday night, light five candles, either you or your husband, five candles connected chamisha or the chesed, parallel to the five lights of chesed that were created in the beginning. Shenemar v'yar elokim et haor kitov that Hashem says it's written in the beginning at in Bereshis. Vayar Elokim Hashem saw that the light is good. Ve'im is the man Oto Yom Shemotzim Bosefer Torah Alta Lele Sefer Torah Bat Sibur. But it's not a day that you take out a book of Torah. But if it's, it falls on, on Monday or Thursday, so a man should go and go up to the Torah and read from the Torah. So this is a big day, dear ladies. Besiata Dishmaya, don't forget next week. I'm, don't miss, I'm going to remind you on Monday, but we're going to do Sudat Amenim on Monday, and Bezrat Hashem create good advocates for us in Klal Yisrael, Bezrat Hashem, and I'll remind you, Blin Eder, Besiat Adishmei on Monday, Besiat Adishmei. Now, Bezrat Hashem, let's continue. You remember that we spoke, shh, 
So you can go uh, on Tuesday night, yes, you can go to Mikveh. If you can't, so go even on Wednesday night, Bezrat Hashem, if you can, okay? Even unmarried ladies can go? Betach, unmarried ladies, go to the Mikveh without a blessing. Of course not when you have the period and the, okay. when you are clean, you go to the Mikveh. But if you're not married, if you're divorced or a widower, or you don't get your period anymore, at least four times a year you should go to the Mikveh. Without a blessing, you don't bless, you just dip your body in the mikveh. Why? Because it's like when you go out, it's like you're a new baby, a baby born with white uh, aura around yourself, white energy with white color around, just like a baby, a baby has white aura around himself. Usually you'll see a lot of people go before Yom Kippurim. You, you go usually before the high holidays. Why to purify ourselves? Do you call the mikveh? Because some mikveh do not allow unmarried women to come to the mikveh and dip their bodies. So you call before to be sure that the mikveh will accept you. The mikveh that they do allow you to come. Usually before Yom Kippurim, everybody can go. Be'ezrat Hashem to the mikveh, they allow. I know in Borough Park they allow. In some places they allow everybody to come to the mikveh. You have to call the mikveh and speak to the balanit before, and, and if, they, if they have a problem, they will ask the rabbi, or you'll speak to the rabbi and ask to... Can, of course, before Yom Kippur. Dear ladies, and go and dip your body in the mikveh. Why? Because you cleanse yourself from the sin. What would be the four times a year if you think that you should go? Rosh Hashanah? Yom Kippurim Tov, Pesach, Shavuot, all of the high holidays can to go before them without a blessing for women that are divorced or widows or women that don't have their period anymore, okay? Even if they are married, it's good. A quest Yes. I know. So I just said that four times a year, it's good to go to the mikveh. Please translate for her in Russian. But at the end of the... the at the end of the lesson, Bezrat Hashem, I, I said I have to learn a few uh, small, Russian, <laughs> I have to tell you, we spoke last lesson about Amnon Betamar. You remember the, or the whole story of the children of David and Melech, King David, Amnon Betamar. Somebody asked me, who is the mother of Amnon? And I said, maybe Chagid, but I didn't remember well, so I checked it, and the mother of Amnon is uh, Achinoam Israelit. The mother of Chagit is the mother of Adoniyahu. So I checked it in order to give you the name of, her, of the mother. But furthermore, you remember I gave it, Hashem gave me the schut to give you two examples of Yichud, which means, we'll start over here and I'll uh, uh, just review the two examples in two minutes, Bli Neder. It says, Bevaikra Rabba, Mipnei Mani Smecha Parashat Arayot, why? The, the parasha, the portion of Arayot, which is a haremot, that speaks about in, intimate relationships that are forbidden, is close to parashat Kedoshim, to the portion of Kedoshim, of holy, that the nation of Israel is holy. So why is it close, one after the other? It starts with a haremot, and then immediately you have Kedoshim. Why, do I, why did Hashem give me the schut to teach you this now? Because on Yom Kippurim, and we don't have time uh, uh, to, so it's relevant now. On Yom Kippurim, in Chash Yom Kippurim, we read Acharei Mot, we read Besiat uh, from the Torah, Acharei Mot, all about Arayot, all about intimate relationships that are forbidden. We start with, it starts on Yom Kippurim, open the Machzor of Yom Kippurim, you'll see it over there, it starts with Ish, Ish, El Kol Sher Psaro Lo Tikravu. It says you are not allowed to come close to your relatives. Must close, to hug and kiss, oh, do you see them, to shake hands, this is what it means. A man and a woman, Lo Tikravu, Legalot Erva, because from this it will cause it can cause intimate relationships that are forbidden, and it can cause hirure avera, the thoughts of making a sin. So we read this on Yom Kippurim. That's why we study it now, dear ladies. So it says, Beveikra Rabba, why is this parasha, this, the forbidden of intimate relationship is close to the, uh, that we are holy nations, the parashat Gdoshim, El Alam in order to teach you Shekol makom shata motzek dusha, every place that you find kdusha holiness, the Rabbi Yehuda ben Pazi, the Amal, Rabbi Yehuda ben Pazi, 
רבי יהודה בן פזיז says, כל מי שהוא גודר עצמו מן הערווה נקרא קדוש. He who keeps himself from, from uh, secluding to a man that he, a woman that is secludes herself for a man that is forbidden for her, and a man that secludes himself for her woman that is forbidden for him is called holy, kadosh. This is holy. And we gave an example of Yosef at Sadiq. But why did he come to this test with a wife of Potiphera? Because you remember Bilchot Yehud, the, the Jewish laws of Yehud, of being secluded, says, Heyotam shel ish v'isha, being a man and a woman, yachad b'makom evudad, together in a place that there are no people over there around them. This is Yehud. Isur ha-yechud hu isur mitzad atzmo. You're not allowed to do it from, by its own. It's not that you will come to touch each other. You're not allowed to be a man and a woman that are forbidden, that they have forbidden, in, uh, that are forbidden by the Torah, intimate relationship between them, to be in the same room alone, except for father and mother, uh, a father and his child, or mother with her child, and a husband and wife. But all the other relatives are not allowed to be in the same room alone. We'll speak. We'll speak about everything. Write the questions. At the end, I will answer. Okay? Afilu im lo nigrema vera no sefet, which means even if there wasn't any other sin, just being together is already a sin. In a place that is closed, it's already etzem ha-yechudu isur chamur. That's what it says. So... Let's go Besiata Dishmael Bilam Arasha. Bilam that Balak, the king of Moab, wanted that he will curse La Alenu, uh, the Israelites, and he saw that he couldn't curse them because Hashem only gave him to say blessings for the children of Israel. He told Balak before he went, that's how he disliked the children of Israel. Shelo, where is it? I wrote it here. In Masachat Sanadin, it's written, page 106. Elokehem shel elu sone zimahu. The God of the Israelites does not like intimate relationships that are forbidden. Incense. Okay, nachon, amarti nachon. V'siyat adishma. So Hashem, because Hashem forbids it, He says, I took away the nations from the land of Israel and I gave you the land of Israel because they sinned with this. That one woman was, had the intimate relationships with two men, or one man it took a, a, a mother and her daughter. They had all of this on the land of Israel, and the land of Israel is holy. And Hashem does not allow these things. So Hashem said, because of this, I'm taking them away from the land of Israel, and I'm going to give the land of Israel, the holy land, to the holy nation. We are considered a holy nation. Can we value this? We are the sons and the daughters of a king, the king of kings. So Hashem says, what does it mean, Isu Arayot? So Hashem gave me the schut to prepare for you that you can see it easily. It says like this. There are 11 relatives of a man, and it's true for a man and a woman, okay? I'm speaking for a man, but it's true also for a woman. The same thing. So a man, he has 11 relatives that he's not allowed to be intimate with or to have yehud with or to be in the same room without anybody else inside the room. And it's his, okay, chatos akavot mishpacha shel adam, imo achoto bito which means his mother, his sister, his daughter, his um, have intimate relationship that is forbidden to do with his mother, his sister, his daughter, the wife of his father, even if it's not his mother. You remember um, Ruven? You remember Ruven? Ruven, Bilbel Yetzuei Aviv. Yaakov had the, his, Bilha as his wife. You remember Bilha? She was the maid of Rachel Imenu, and Rachel didn't have children. She told Yaakov, please marry Bilha. So I, I have children. The, her children will be on my lap. And when, uh, Rachel, uh, and when Rachel passed away, Yaakov put his bed in the tent of Bilha. What did Reuven do? He took the tent out of there. You remember the, uh, the bed, sorry, out of the tent. 
Yeah, I have to translate at the same time. So sometimes, <laughs> thank you. So Eshet Aviv, even the wife of his father that is not his mother, he is not allowed to have to be intimate with her. Eshet Echav, the wives of his brothers, he is not allowed to be intimate with them. The Eshet Dodav and the wives of his uncles, Dodotav and his um, aunts. And I can give you an example. You remember Amram, the father of Moshe and Aaron? He married Moshe, Aaron, and Miriam, were born to Yochevet. Yochevet was his aunt. But this was before we received the Torah on Muhammad al Sinai. So you're not allowed to marry your aunt. You're not, uh, to not to marry your aunt. You're not allowed to have intimate relationship with your aunt. You're not allowed to have intimate, and it's the same thing with women, just vice versa. And you're not allowed to have relationship, the man is not allowed to have relationship with his uh, uh, daughter-in-law and with his Lailenu grandchildren. The second thing that is considered also forbidden uh, intimate relationships is between seven relatives that become his relatives, a husband, uh, um, a man that is married, that become his relatives by marriage. Okay? So, if was it? By marriage, it's the, his mother-in-law, the grandmother of his mother-in-law from the father's side and the mother's side. All of this is from the Rambam, from Mishneh Torah la Rambam, Hilchot Isurei Bia, dear ladies. So he's forbidden, and also it's written by Haremot. We read it on Yom HaKippurim. It's his mother-in-law, the grandmothers from both sides, from her, his, his uh, wife's mother and his wife's father, the grandmothers on both sides. The daughter of his wife, even if it's not his daughter, the daughter, the grandchildren of his wife from her daughters or from her sons and the sister of his wife. The sister he is allowed after his wife passes away. But while she's alive, he's not al allowed to be intimate with her. And then the third thing is su eshet ish. The third thing is that forbidden is to be with a married woman. Isur eshetish. The fourth thing that we read on Yom HaKippurim is it forbidden to have intimate relationship with a man with a man and chas shalom with an animal. Those are all of the arayot that we read on Yom HaKippurim, on Mincha of Yom HaKippurim. The Rambam says... I want to mention oh, everything that I give you is from Shulchan Aruch Bezrat Hashem Shal Rabbi Yosef Karo and from Mishneh uh, Torah Rambam Isurei Bia and from Sefer Achinuch, dear ladies. Arayot Bemezid, he who does it on purpose and has intimate relationship, Chayav Karet, he is eliminated. You remember we spoke about karet, the three kinds of karet. Please go to the previous lessons. Shneimar ki kol asher yaseh mi kol atoyevot ele. Hashem says oh, oh, everything that you do from all of this disgusting thing to avot. Venichretu anefashot lo alenu. There's karet for the nefesh, for the soul. Shneihem aboel vaanivaal. Veim ayu shogegin. Then they need to bring chatat. And there's also arayot, otan arayot, shesh ben, part of them, they have mitat bet din. It's not only there's karet, but also the four deaths, executions of bet din, of the Jewish court. You remember, skila srefa, herek, vechenek. So, dear ladies, and also lashes, besrat Hashem. So, Baruch Hashem, yesh bakol mikol kol. I would like to give you an example before I continue over here. Shh, it's very important. I have two stories that I want to give you. Three stories. First of all, let's go to the Gemara. And the, the Gemara Masechet Sukkas, I think page 52, I'm not sure. Let's see. Sukkah. No, it's page 177. 177. Dear ladies, it's written over there about Abaye, a big rabbi, Abaye. And Abaye heard a man and a woman, they're not married, and they were speaking among themselves that they need to travel to a certain place. So the man told her, let's, let's travel together. Now, if you travel alone, even in a forest 
or in a gina, a garden, a place that nobody is there, it's also yichud, because nobody is there. You don't have a shomer. You need somebody to guard, to, to be a god over there. So it's yichud. Even if you go at school or in the office, if you are with a principal inside, a man and a woman inside, and the door is closed, and it's locked, it's yichud. Everything, is, this is Yehud because you're in a certain place alone, a man and a woman, you understand? This is Yehud. So he heard them speak and they said, okay, in the morning we're going to wake up uh, very early in the morning and go together. Just that we'll have a partner to go, not to go alone. So Abaya heard this and he said, wow, I have to be a Shomer, a God. So he quietly went behind them. And he went behind them the whole way and at a certain time, and they didn't touch each other, they were just walking. At a certain time, they had to go each one a, di a different direction. So they spoke to each other and said, wow, it's, if we would only we had to go to the same place, it would be nice that we'll go together, not alone. And they went separately. Abaye started crying, it says. And he says, wow. He said he was crying so much, and one and an old person saw him, and he said, why are you crying? He says, look at them. They walked one next to each other. They didn't touch. They didn't say anything that is not allowed to be said. I was behind them. They don't even know that I was behind them. And nothing happened. But if I was the one who walked with a woman alone, I don't know if I would uh, stay around, uh, not touch her and not uh, do a something that is not allowed. So he started crying. He said, this is a righteous person, two naive children that went together and didn't do nothing with, with each other. So this old man told him, the bigger, the, more, the bigger scholar a person is, his yetzerara, his evil inclination is bigger. The, the more a person is closer to Hashem, the yetzerara works on him. You can't even th know how much the Yetzirah works on him. The bigger the person is, the bigger his Yetzirah is, because it has to be in the same level. The test has to be. Otherwise, there's no test. There's no reward and there's no suffering, dear ladies. You know, the, the students of the Gera, his Hasidim came to him and they asked him, they said, Yo, you're studying the whole day, you don't have Yetzirah. The Gaon Mevilna Shutot Aganananelu took his hand and he put his hand on, on the table with a big sound and he says, the more big, a bigger a person in Torah, the more he's holy, the Yetzara he has is bigger. It's harder for him even to overcome the Yetzara, except for Hashem that helps him because of the Torah. Why? Because you remember what Hashem gave me the schut to give you? Because a chash berosho yasok batorah, Masechet Barachot says, he who has a headache should go and study Torah. He who has a stomachache should go and study Torah. Who, he who has a throat ache should go and study Torah. Who is all his body aches should go and study Torah. The store, the, come to lessons, study Torah, because the Torah protects him. And you remember when we said chash, ma ze chash? By the pardes, ma ze chash? Chet ze chamor, ve shin ze shor. You see? Chash. Which means shor is the klipa, is the barrier of the um, esav arashad, esav the wicked, and chamor is the barrier of Ishmael. Baruch Hashem, we see them all over today. Of Ishmael, dear ladies. This is about pride, gava, and this is about lust to this world, tava. Dear ladies, the combination is Amalek, Kelev, a dog, it's Amalek. So he who feels that he is bothered, he doesn't feel well, his thoughts go to a, a place that is not good. He should engage in Torah. If we feel angry, we should engage in Torah. So say a parak of Tehillim that you remember, or put money in charity, but we should do something with Torah, dear ladies. Because once you do it, then he, there was a rabbi that when he was angry, he used to open the Gemara and start studying to see if he's allowed to be angry. And when he finished, he was, wasn't angry anymore. <laughs> so you have to be engaged in Torah. So this is the Arayot. Dear ladies, you remember Bilam Arasha caused the children of Israel to fall with the Arayot. Because it says in Shulchan Aruch that 
אסור להתייחד עם שום אישה, you're not allowed to be secluded with any woman, בין ילדה, בין זקנה, if she's a girl or an old woman, בין ישראלית, בין גויה, if she's Israelite or a non-Jewish woman. And what happened? They went to the tents to buy things, the children of Israel, בשיטים, that's what Bilam told Balak to do, to put tents with Moaviot and Midianiot, and the women are from Moab and from Midian. They sat over there and they were intimate with them and this is what all the kilkul, all of the, um, all of the ruining came and 24,000 people died because of this, because of Arayot. So let's continue first over here. Ha'isur, the, the prohibition, chal gam ala ish ve gam ala isha is for women and men the same way. בין נשואים, בין רווקים, if they are married or not married, if they are, איך זה נקרא רווקים? סינגל. if they are married or single. Now, whether, when you are married, the prohibition comes from the Torah. דאורייתא ייחוד עם אישה נשואה. Then, ייחוד עם פנויה, a single woman comes after the story of Amnon ותמר, which we studied last lesson thoroughly. It comes, so King David and the Sanhedrin extended this prohibition and said also a non-married woman is not allowed to be alone with a man in the same room. Do you remember what happened? Then Beit, Beit Hillel and Beit Shammai, Shammai and Hillel, they also extended this prohibition in Goya. You are not allowed to be also with a Goya. This is what's written eventually in Shulchan Aruch. Not a, a, a Jewish woman and not a Goy alone. You have, you're not allowed to be secluded alone with a, a Jewish woman or, or a Goya. Married or not married. And furthermore, they gave a permission. When you are in Shiduchim, when you want to get married and you need to meet and to go on a date, they gave a permission. Only when you are... Uh, when you have a shiduch and you go on a date, you're allowed to look at her, but not to look with a, with a ha heart that has zima, with a heart that wants to do something bad, but to look, uh, to look with a good heart. It's written in the Gemara, Shelo isa adam isha at shirena. A person is not allowed to marry a woman without seeing her first. Why? Because then he will have a surprise and he will say, but she's not beautiful in my eyes. external and internal, you understand? So he has to see her first. Another thing, listen very carefully. Masechet Brachot, it's a Dat Samech Aleph. It's written over there. Ha-meratze ma'ot me'isha le'isha mi'ado le'ada. He who gives, you know, the change, the money from his hand to a woman's hand, or a woman to a man's hand, the same thing, it's the same vice versa, the same thing. Umiyadaliyado, vice versa. Kedeli istakelva, so he can look at her. And he touched her, you know, put in. Afilu gadol batorah, even if he's a scholar in Torah. Ke Moshe Rabbeinu, like Moshe Rabbeinu alav ha-shalom. Listen very carefully. She kibel Torah ma'ar Sinai, that he received the Torah from the mountain of Sinai, עליו הכתוב אומר, on him, the, it's written in the, in the Torah, in Mishlei, that King Solomon wrote, יד ליד לא ינקרה. He who gave from hand to hand and touched the woman, or looked at her, dear ladies, לא ינקרה, Hashem will not clean him, לא ינקה מדינה של גיהנום, from the judgment of hell. And I want to give you a story, a true story that happened. Dear ladies in Yerushalayim, uh, two stories, but I'm going to give you first the, there was a, in Yerushalayim a family that had a, a few children, and he, they had a five-year-old boy, and the five-year-old boy was swinging on a swing, and the mother didn't look at him, because you know, they swing on the swing, but sometimes what happens, the children, the swing starts to be, to be twisted, entangled. So it started to be tangled, lo alenu, and the rope went over his neck, lo alenu, lo alenu, shaf echad lo ida. It's a true story. And the rope went over his neck, and he was strangled. When he came, 
when uh, strangled, and when he came, thank you, and when he came Besiata uh, to the hospital, he was unconscious and nobody can do anything, and for months it was all over, everybody, all the radio, everybody was davening for him for months. One day, and the mother couldn't stop crying, months he was like this. One day, Rabbi uh, David Frankel, Genalenu, he's already passed away, Genalenu, Mibnei Brak, called the family and he was speaking to the father and he said, I want to tell you a dream that I dreamt. Now everybody's reading to heal him for this boy. And he tells him, I, I dreamt a dream that I was in heaven and I saw the court in heaven and there were Dayanim sitting over there, rabbis sitting over there, and there were three boxes a box that was written on it, life, a box of death, and a box that was written souls on it. And I saw that the Dayanim take out from the box of soul names, take a name, and then it's decided in the court in heaven if it's for life or for death. And the, the, the note is put inside. And I see that the note of your son is taken out of the box of souls. And I see that they put it, Lo Alenu, they want to put it, he says, in the box of death. They, they're going to put it in the box of death, but there was immediately came scissors, blue scissors. And he says, from where? He says, immediately from Machane Yehuda, from the market of Machane Yehuda in Yerushalayim. He says, because this is what's written on the scissors. A blue scissors comes and cuts, and cuts this note. And it's decided that the boy is for life. He's going to be alive. Well, the father hears it. Immediately after he tells him this, there's a phone. He answers the phone. The doctor says, immediately you have to come here to the hospital in Yerushalayim. Len Kerem. So they go to the hospital and they're already, you know, the heart is already down. They think, uh, the doctor says, immediately. So they come over there and the doctor is smiling to them. I don't know what happened, but look at your son. He's, he's alive, he's smiling. We did checkups, nothing is wrong with him. It's like nothing happened. They're all crying. The father forgot everything that the rabbi told him, David Frankel, everything he forgot. He was so stunned, they couldn't stop crying. On the way back, the father remembers and he says to his wife, listen, I want to tell you, before we went to the doctor, Rabbi David Frankel from Bnei Brak called me and he said he had a dream and he wanted to tell me the dream. He was a messenger. You remember I told you that three dreams that are true. Most of the dreams are a lie, but three are true. One dream that is true that when a person dreams for another person, this is a true dream. When a person dreams for another person, this is true. So dear ladies, he tells his wife the story about the blue scissors and how there were three boxes, life, death, and a box of neshamot, besiata dishmaya. And he tells his wife, and his wife tells him to stop the car, and she can't stop crying. She cries, she cries, she can't even start speaking. She couldn't speak. And she tells him that she's shocked. And now she tells him, she's a, she's a dressmaker. So she goes and, and buy, uh, buys material, but uh, fabric. So she goes and buys fabric in Yerushalayim Bashuk. And usually uh, when she takes the scissors, she has loose scissors. So she hands it, yad le yad, lad le yad. She hands it to the man that sells the fabric with her hand and he hands it back to her, dear ladies. But she says when her son was very sick, she decided that she will take a mitzvah upon herself to be, to, to be uh, secluded from men. So she didn't hand it. She put the scissors like this, and he took it, and then she told him to put it on the table, and she took it from the table. She didn't touch his hand. He didn't touch her. He didn't, not from hand to hand. And she says, this is the blue scissors that he saw. This is the mitzvah. You think it's nothing, but this mitzvah is arayot. It's the part of the three sins that you should die and not go over it. These are the three sins, which means when we go to a wedding and we kiss and we hug, we are not allowed. 
It's part of the three sins. It's part of Arayot that you are not allowed to kiss and to hug when we meet in the synagogue, when we meet in the road, when at home. We are not allowed to do this. When we have um, uh, sons in, son in, son, uh, sons in law or daughter or, the, or daughter in law, we are not allowed to do. We are allowed a mother is allowed to hug her daughter in law, but not the father in law to hug his daughter in law. We are not allowed to do and kisses and, and shaking hands. And I want to tell you that the non Jewish people, the goyim, respect us when we respect our religion. Know it. 100% because then Hashem gives us chen bechesed, which means beauty in front of the eyes of everyone. Not only in front of his eyes when we keep all of his mitzvot. Furthermore, dear ladies, another thing which is very, very important, I'll give you another story. It's a true story. That have Rav Mutsafi, Tzion Mutsafi, Shalita, wrote the story, and he remembered this from his father, Zichron Olivacha, Rav Saleman Mutsafi. It's also in Yerushalayim. And he says, like 50 years ago, there was an old woman that went to the synagogue of Oil Rachel in Yerushalayim. She was 115 years old. And he says about her, she lived in the neighborhood of Mekor Baruch, Berchov Rashi. Pinat Tachakmuni Yerushalayim. In Yerushalayim, in Jerusalem. And she was always dressed up modestly, always, he says, dressed up modestly and with layers that you couldn't see her body. And on Shabbatot, she used to give a, a Torah lesson for the women when they read Tehillim together. When she passed away, he says that a, a Chevrat Kadisha took care of her body, Besiata Dishmaya, and his father, Rabbi Solomon, they came over here with his father, Rabbi Solomon, Mutsafi, and he says that his father said a story that happened in Baghdad, in Iraq of today, in Baghdad, and he said it was an, in the time of the Ben Ishchai, Rabbi Yosef Chaim, Alav Hashem, Shchutot Aganelenu. In Baghdad, there was a man that passed away. Chevrat Kadisha wanted to bury him. Now, over there in Iraq, the, the earth, when you, you make a stone or you, or you cover, the earth is not so tight. It's like mud. And it, it becomes, how do you say it? I It doesn't say, you know, when you, put a, when you close the grave and you put, you put on it the stone and you put the earth on it, it stays but over there, the earth is not, uh, it, doesn't it, it doesn't settle exactly. So every year they need to, uh, to check it and, and to settle it every place that is not settled. So he, they went to bury him. But once they put him inside, part of the earth of another grave started going out into his grave. And he saw one of the people in Hevat Kadisha, the Tachrichim. The, the garment that you put, the white garment that you put upon a person when he passes away. That's the only thing that he has on him, the garment. But he sees that it looks like a new garment. And he, sees that the, he looks at the name and he says, but we buried over here a woman, a, a, a person over here at, at least 10 years ago. How come the garment is new, looks like new? So he took his hand and he started um, feeling the body underneath, which is supposed to be only bones. Exactly. But he feels body. A whole body and a body of a woman. He took his hand quickly, closed it over there and closed everything. At night, Rav Suleiman Mutsafi says the story, and it was in the time of Aben Ishchai. He was astonished. At night, he has a dream. He came to him this woman this righteous woman, and she tells him, and she blames him, Atahe asta lagatbi, you dared touch me? With Natsel, he says, I apologize. And he explained to her that he saw the tachrichim, the, the white garment, and how it's, it's all like new, he says. And he just wanted to know who was underneath this. He mshicha v'amralo, ata lo mitbayesh? Aren't you ashamed of yourself? Atayodea, do you know that all of my life, shum gever zar lo nagabi, except for my husband, 
none, no man touched me, she says. I feel even with a etzba, even with a finger, he, she says. Eche asta lagat bi, how dare you touch me. Takshivu. She says, par esrim shana meaz moti, 20 years passed from the day that I passed away. Ve af echad lo ez lagat bi, nobody touched me. She says, mekevan shasita kach, because you did this. This has to show you that there's nothing between this world and the, sec and the next world. This is only a world of imagination, only a test. Because you did this, tomorrow you're going to be called to the court in heaven. He's going to, yeah, he was, he's being going to be called to the court in heaven. In the morning, he wakes up, he goes to his rabbi, he says shacharit, and he tells him the story. He finished, finished shacharit, he passes away. Me, immediately he died. Because he was called to court of heaven. But he didn't know, he didn't want it. But this is how righteous women were. Even Be'etzba, with a finger, she says, nobody touched me. Most likely she was also righteous. That yes. Was so by him. But, she, but she was so righteous that they agreed to call him to the court of heaven. And that 20 years she's dead and the body is still whole? Yes, that's right. The body does not rot if a person does not have jealousy. If you don't, kinat, avava, kavod, motzim, et adam, jealousy, lust, and honor take a human being literally out of this world. A body is a whole when a person does not have jealousy. When a person is not is happy with what Hashem gave him. The good things, the things that doesn't seem so good, everything is happy. When he sees that his, his neighbor, has a, the, his son is getting married, he says, Hashem, thank you for making him happy and marrying off his children. Please marry off my children too. This is happiness without jealousy. When a person does this, his body stays out as a whole, just like when he was alive. Jealousy is the... Uh, jealousy is the rotting of the body in the grave. When a person is alive, if he's jealous... He all wrinkled and everything. The beauty of the soul of a person is outside, which means if he has a good soul, you can see it outside of him. If he, has, if he doesn't have a good soul, if he doesn't have, everything ends up with good heart. You remember, king? Good heart. If he has a good heart, you can see it. All the light comes and shines from him. If he doesn't have a good heart, which is jealousy, honor, he runs a lust in this life, has gam chamo ve gam shor, and kelev basof. He has also a, a donkey, a, an ox, and the, and the dog in the middle. If he has all of these characteristics, you can see it because it, it shows from his face. I would like to continue, Besiata Dishmaya. I'm almost, I'll finish. I know it's a big subject, but I would like to give you a few things. Um, don't, it's written also over here in Shulchan Aruch that you remember that even, and I said that also last lesson, that even the virgins, and you're not allowed to get close to them because they are all nechshavim nida. You remember, they are all considered nida because they don't go to the mikveh. So you don't go, as, that's why this is part of the prohibition not to go in between two women. A man that don't, doesn't go in between two women because it shortens his life. He doesn't know if this woman is nida or that is not nida. That's why you're not allowed because you have also tarata mishpacha, the purity of the family, that once your wife is nida, once your wife has the period and counts the seven days, you're not allowed to touch her. You're, not, you're allowed to be in the same house, but there are laws that you have to follow, separation laws. So, dear ladies, I would like, I'm going to end, end now, Besiata Dishmaya, and tell you, Besiata Dishmaya, may Hashem bless all of us to do tshuva, to repent in front of Him. May we all have the strength to overcome the Yetzirah, that Hashem will give us the strength, and Besiata Dishmaya, 
to be secluded from, uh, from men and the men from us, that Bezrat Hashem, that we will be really a holy nation. Amen. And may Hashem will, Bezrat Hashem brings Mashiach Tzitkanu Mimra B'Yameinu Amen. Eliyahu Navi Eliyahu Tishbi, Eliyahu Gledi Mimra B'Shechun Navi Zanui, Eliyahu Navi Zachur Latov. Eloulam Yipared Adam Yichavero B'Dvar Lachai Yachid V'Rabim Alachai K'Rabim. And I love you all, Bezrat Hashem. Toda Rabah Hashem.